chapter 5 is where we're going to be. And I think it's a perfect summation of what Jesus accomplished and who he is because of what happened on Good Friday. Good Friday is the day that we Christians remember what happened to Jesus. Not just what happened to him, but what Jesus did for us and for the glory of his Father. We remember King Jesus humiliated, beat down, crucified, whipped, scourged, tortured. We see King Jesus be brought low. We see King Jesus, who is innocent, be made and and treated like a criminal. This saddens our heart to know that Jesus did all of that because of our sin to God. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. That a wage is something that is earned by an individual. Well, what was earned for sinners what is deserved for sinners, it's death. And yet the innocent, spotless Lamb of God comes to earth, lives a righteous life, an obedient life, a life well-pleasing to God, and is treated as if he were the sinner. That's what Good Friday is about. That's why Good Friday is good. Because you and I do not have to bear the penalty for our sin no longer. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you are accounted righteous and forgiven and set free. If you have become born again by the Spirit of God, if you have uh, believed in the Lord Jesus and repented of your sins, this is a sobering and foundational and hopeful truth that we have as Christians. That what Jesus accomplished on Good Friday is good, as terrible and as unbelievable the events of that day were. So as we focus on what Jesus did, I actually want us to look at Revelation 5. Now you may think that might be an odd passage until you read what it says. Revelation chapter 5 is written by the Apostle John. Remember, Revelation was written by John while he was banished on an island called Patmos. He was in trouble for preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus. 
John wouldn't shut up, so they put him on a penal colony so that he would no longer tell other people about Jesus. Well, John could not obey that order, and he continued. But while on that island, he had a vision. He had an encounter with the Lord Jesus, and this is what the book of Revelation is. It's an unveiling of what John sees, not just of the future, but of who Jesus is and what Jesus has accomplished. And in case you didn't know, the book of Revelation is all about the conquering Lamb of God. It was written as an encouragement to seven churches so that they would endure their persecution, endure this time of trouble, so that they will know that it too has an expiration date because King Jesus rules and reigns at the end. At the end, he inhabits the new heavens and new earth and lives with his people. So hold on, bear a little longer. Jesus wins, don't give up. And so in Revelation chapter 5, we are taken with the Apostle John in a vision to the very throne room of God. I, I'm going to read the passage for you and then we'll dig through it and see what it means for this Good Friday. In Revelation chapter 5, we see John say, Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. John sees this scene and it's so dramatic. He sees the one who's sitting on the throne who is God. God sits on his throne. And in his hand, his right hand of authority, he sees a scroll. And the scroll hasn't been opened. And it's been sealed with seven seals. A seal back in this day, of course, um, secured the document. But more importantly, it, it uh, gave authenticity to where that document came from. It was almost like a, sort of like a public notary today, where you go get something notarized and you know that somebody, whoever needs to see that document, knows that document is official. This scroll is sealed with seven seals, perfection, completeness, and it's from God. It's in his hands. And an angel yells out and he asks a question. Who is worthy to open the scroll? They want to see what's inside and break its seals. Because the seal is from God, not just anybody could open this. Not just anyone could open this scroll. And the angel asks this question to the multitude of, of those who were watching. And John writes for us in verse 3. And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And John says, I began to weep. I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. John knows that whatever is in the scroll is the answer for his suffering and the suffering for the world. John knows that in this scroll contains the answers for peace and security and the end of all of this nonsense that is brought upon by Adam's rebellion and a broken world of sin. John knows this. And so when he realizes that there may, may not be anybody to open it and that the suffering and the sin of this world could continue, he, he weeps. Isn't that what we do? Or what we want to do as well? When we look at our broken world and we see uh, 
terrible things happening. Terrorism, murders, abortion, rape, wars, lies, injustices of all kinds, racism, drugs, broken marriages, hate. All of this are symptoms. All of these are are a result from the Garden of Eden and the very first fall of mankind. John is looking at this scroll because he knows that whatever is in that scroll will be justice. But if nobody could open it, will there ever be an end to all of these things? Do we have anything to look forward to? And John begins to realize, I don't know. No one can open this. No, nobody in heaven, no angel, none of the other elders or the, or the beasts that were there could open it. No human on the earth could open it. Nobody could look into it. And this troubles John very, very much. Who can open this? And look at the question that the that the angel asked, who is worthy to open it? It's just not who can open it, because really anybody could have opened it. But the question is, who is worthy? See, the individual who opens up these scrolls to bring to a conclusion human history and the sin on human earth, on earth can only be one person, and that person has to be counted as worthy. Who is worthy? Who has earned it? Who is deserving of this? Hmm. John knows that he's not. John knows that he's not worthy. John knows that he's not. But then an angel cheers him up. One of the elders actually says to him, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. John, get up. I've got good news for you. There is someone who's going to open this scroll and he is worthy. And who does the angel say it is? It is the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Now, who is this? Maybe you're watching this and that's the first time you've ever heard of those designations for some. Who is the lion of the tribe of Judah and the root of David? Those two phrases or um, IDs were associated their messianic titles. From the book of Genesis, God has promised a Messiah. From Genesis 3.15, he promised that the seed of the woman would one day crush the head of the serpent that deceived her. But then just a short time later in Genesis 49, there's a gospel promise of a Messiah coming. And out of the 12 tribes of Israel, we know specifically from which tribe the Messiah came. Genesis 49 foretold from the tribe of Judah. This is what it says. Judah is a lion's cub from the prey, my son. You have gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion and a lioness who dare rouse him. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until tribute comes to him. And and to him shall be obedience of the peoples. From Genesis 49, we're promised that from the tribe of Judah, somebody would come to be the Messiah and he will be like a lion. Now, a lion speaks of authority, doesn't it? Power, kingly, ferocious lion. A king that rules the jungle, right? Beast, the king of the, 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 king of the jungle. But the, this person from the tribe of Judah will be like this king-like figure, this Messiah. But not only that, 
more specifically, not just from the tribe of Judah, but from the root of David. From the root of David, which of course is another messianic prophecy. Not just from this tribe, but from this specific family comes the Messiah. And so why can all this weeping stop? John, you know who this is. You know who is worthy because Jesus is that Messiah. Jesus is from the tribe of Judah. Jesus is from David's family. He is the son of David. As the crowds yelled out on Palm Sunday, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. He has conquered. That's why he's worthy. He has won. He has victory. He is deserving to open these scrolls and to end all suffering. Yeah, that's who there is. There is salvation. There is peace. There is hope. His conquering has enabled his worthiness so that he can be the only one in heaven or on earth to open the scrolls and bring this whole mess to an end. Then John notices something else. In verse 6, he says, And between the throne and the four living creatures, and among the elders I saw a lamb. A lamb standing as though it had been slain. Revelation is such a symbolic book. We see a lion from the tribe of Judah. And now John looks and he sees a lamb. A lamb standing. And here's the interesting thing. As though it had been slain. He sees this person who is worthy And he describes them as a lamb with seven horns and seven eyes and the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And we don't have time to get into all that, but there's a lot of symbolism there. And look at verse 7. And this lamb, verse 7, he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So this Lamb-like person, who is, of course, the Lord Jesus, comes and he takes the scroll out of the hand of God the Father sitting on the throne. Yes. And once he takes the scroll, heaven begins to sing to him. In verse 9, and they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open the seals. For you were, and here it is, slain. Why is Jesus worthy? Why has Jesus conquered, according to a couple verses ago? Why? Because you were slain. And by your blood, you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. The reason Jesus can take this scroll and open it up and end all suffering and sin on the earth, bringing full account of God's kingdom, is because he was slain. When was he slain? On Good Friday. Why is Good Friday good? Because the Lamb of God was slain. And when he was slain, he has conquered And by conquering sin and hell and the devil, what did he do? He ransomed people. He purchased people for God. Who? Where? Every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. This is what also what 
John wrote in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world. Who is the world? It's people redeemed and ransomed for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Jesus is worthy. Why is Good Friday good? Because he was slain. Two descriptions in this chapter about Jesus. He's a lion and a lamb. He's the lion, which says that he's king, ferocious with full authority. But then he's also a lamb, a sacrificial lamb. A lamb that has bled. A lamb that was sacrificed for God. And through his blood, through his death, Jesus wins. Jesus is worthy. This is why Good Friday is good. But Dan, don't you remember what happened to Jesus? Of course. He was crushed for our sins. He was bruised for us. He was spit upon. He was slapped. He was humiliated. He was crucified. He was whipped severely. But more than that, more than the suffering of, of, of mankind upon his body, more than any of that, was Jesus bearing the full weight of the wrath of God upon his body on that cross. And he satisfied God the Father as a result. He appeased God that his law and, his, and the conditions of his law were satisfied. Whose sin was it? It was his people's sin. This is what the angel told Mary and Joseph when Jesus was born. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He was born for this. Jesus was uh, sent by God for this. So that when he stands in heaven on the right hand of the throne of the Father, he gets up and takes the scroll because he is worthy, because he was fully obedient. He was fully deserving of all praise because he was uh, better than that first Adam who fell and sinned and broke the world. This second Adam, this Jesus, this lion from the tribe of Judah, this lamb of God, has fully obeyed God the Father. And now he is counted worthy to do what we've all been waiting for. You know, we feel it this week, don't we? We're dealing with this coronavirus. We're dealing with the effects of a fallen world. Will that ever end? Is there ever going to be an end for suffering and sin? The answer is yes. Why? Because he has been slain. Good Friday is how God restores the world. Good Friday tells us that suffering and sin has an expiration and that King Jesus wins. But if you were standing there that day, like his disciples were, like his mother was, and the other women, you would not come to that conclusion. You would say, wow, what happened? We lost. This is not the way we envisioned it. He's supposed to overthrow Rome. He's supposed to bring peace. He's dead. What do we do now, what do we do now? We wait. Because although they didn't remember, Jesus told them what would happen. To prove, to give some uh, evidence of everything that he has ever done and said in his life, 
in that he is worthy and deserving, three days later, he rises again from the dead. You see, Good Friday, folks, is necessary. It's necessary for the ending of all suffering and sin and for Jesus to make this place all over again and to redeem a people for himself that rules and reigns with him. Yes, there is an end. There is an expiration. We won't be going and talking about coronavirus forever or, your sin, or the sin of your heart. And so you, in order to rule and reign with this suffering Lamb of God who has conquered, who is worthy to take the scroll, you must understand that on that Good Friday, on that cross, as Jesus is crying out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You must understand that it was your sin that put him there. It was because of your sin and my sin that he had to die so that he could save us. It was our sin that caused his judgment. And God the Father, being a good judge, had to treat Jesus as, as, we, had, as we deserved ourselves. We're the adulterers. We're the uh, addicts. We're the liars and the thieves and the idolaters in heart. But it was Jesus that day that was treated as such so that you and I can go free. And so the message of Good Friday, the gospel, is you can be forgiven because Jesus has paid it all. And because he's paid it all, he is now worthy to end it all. And he will. In his time, this will all be a memory. For some of us who are in Christ, it will be a memory that is sweet as we remember and rejoice and sing to him as these people in heaven do. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing and I heard every creature, John says, in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. I want you to know this, Jesus. I want you to know what the cross is all about. The cross is necessary because God is holy. And because God is holy, he must deal with sin and lawbreakers. And the good news is this, is that he has dealt with that in Jesus Christ. And your debt, your penalty that was due for your sin can be taken care of by believing in Jesus Christ today. You need to come to the conclusion and repent of your sins, knowing who you are and knowing who Jesus is, so that you can trust him and believe in him, the Messiah, the Lamb of God, the Lion from the tribe of Judah, the one who's worthy because he was slain. May you know this, Jesus. May you know and repent of your sins. May you trust in him today on this good Friday. May you know this. And may you be set free. May we worship Jesus because he is worthy. Well, God bless you. We love you. And we're so glad that you've joined us tonight. I do want to talk with you if you have any questions. If, or if tonight, through the preaching of the gospel, you have found yourself to believe, you are convinced in your heart who Jesus is, and you want to believe and be born again, I want to hear from you too. This information is on the bottom of the screen and how you can contact me. And I would love to have more conversation with you. I want to help you see and take your next step in your Christian faith. Well, God bless you. But the good news is this is not the end of the story. Jesus has conquered. And the proof of that is an empty tomb. We'll see you on Sunday morning.